And uh, I'll tell you something, guys. I, we, we just got to stay faithful to the Word, stay faithful to the things of God. The, the flaky stuff, the flaky devils have been loosed from hell. I'm just telling you, the squirrel stuff is coming out of the right and left. And one of the biggest attacks now is, that, like we, we keep talking about this, but I keep seeing it. It's almost every day I see it on Facebook somewhere that the Bible, we don't need the Bible. We just have God on, in us. That's all we need. And that is the big push right now. And, um, you know, that's, that's dangerous. I said that is dangerous. You know, uh, the scriptures, t we, when we went over this, the scriptures talk about the importance of the scriptures. Yeah. And um, some of these people get these new revelations. Mm -hmm. Like uh, some person said one time, he said, a new revelation is nothing but an old heresy. Yeah. Wrapped in new packaging. Yeah. All right. Uh, let, let's read our four foundational text. Um, and um, the first one we find in Habakkuk. That is in the Old Testament, and it is, um, it's right after Nahum, Nahum, and it's right before Zephaniah. Uh, so there you go, we're all back here in the Minor Prophets, and, um, but Habakkuk uh, chapter 2, verse 1, we're going to move real quickly from there back over to Romans, so if, if we take off with you, just, um, you know, you get there, Larry? All right, Habakkuk 2, verse 4 says, um, Behold, his soul, which is lifted up, is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith. The just shall live by his faith. Running over to Romans now, and then we'll go to Romans, Galatians, and then Hebrews. So Romans, the first chapter. With me, it's like you need to have your Bible on speed dial. <laughs> Romans chapter 1, verse 17. Well, we'll just read verse 16 because it goes with it. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to the everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Now, anytime you see a reference to the race of Greek in the New Testament, he's referring to the Gentiles, anyone that's not a Jew, just anyone that's not a Jew. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith as it is written, the just shall live by faith. And over in Galatians chapter 3, now Galatians will proceed Ephesians. Help you out there. If you went into Ephesians, you've gone too far. And it follows uh, Corinthians, the second book of Corinthians. So Galatians chapter 3 and verse 11. But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God, it is evident, for the just shall live by faith. Amen. Now understand what he's referring to, I was talking about to the Mosaic law. You know, the, the ordinances and principles that, that could make could. It was, if you could have kept the entire law, you could have been declared righteous yeah. by the keeping of the law. But Paul also writes in Galatians that the law was given to prove to you you couldn't. <laughs> it was impossible. Okay? The only one who did was Jesus. And he fulfilled, he, he fulfilled all the law. All right? And looking now over into Hebrews, the 10th chapter. And then we'll slide right down out of Hebrews chapter 10 down to chapter 11. So that's where we're going we're gonna to land now. <clears throat> Hebrews 10, 38 says, Now the just shall live by faith. But if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. But we are not of them who draw back unto perdition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. And so we have here, these are our foundation texts for this entire teaching. We're teaching on the ABCs of faith or faith foundations, whichever way we want to refer to it. Um, the four scriptures, now these are the four in the Bible that tells us that the just shall live by faith. It states that basically in one way or the other, um, just shall live by faith, just shall live by faith, the just shall live by faith. Now the, the New Testament scriptures also say the just shall live by faith. The uh, Habakkuk version says the just shall live by his faith. Okay? And so we're saying, that, we're saying this, we have four scriptures 
that says the just shall live by faith. And we've talked about faith. We've, we, we've defined faith on how we get faith. We've talked about uh, what faith is. Uh, we've discussed about, you know, um, the difference between heart faith and head faith and Abraham's faith and Thomas's faith and, um, you know, that we walk by faith and not by sight. There wasn't Christian science. We don't walk in denial of things. We, we uh, recognize um, the circumstances and situations for what they are, yet they don't hinder our walk of faith because we believe God. Amen. 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 God's word is a higher law than the law of circumstances. Amen. The law of the situation you're in. Amen. Now those aren't, biblical, those aren't biblically named laws. I'm just trying to make a point. Whatever you're in, whatever you're dealing with, wherever you're facing, the word of God is a higher law. Amen. And so it supersedes what's going on when you appropriate what the word says by faith. Run with me if you real quick over to... Um, I believe it's First Peter, but I, I could be wrong, but we'll, we'll get there and um, if we need to back up, we'll back up, okay? Yeah, Hebrews, I mean, not Hebrews, 2 Peter, 2 Peter, I'm sorry, 2 Peter, chapter 1. Uh, if we restart reading in verse 2, it says, Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and in Jesus Christ our Lord, according as His, according as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that called us to, ver to glory and virtue. <laughs> How did, now, they're given, but you, you, you get them by the knowledge of them. Right. Amen? Without the knowledge of them, they're not going to work. Right. Okay? Whereby, he, uh, 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 4, are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises. Now, how are you going to know those promises if you don't have the promises to read from? Yeah. You know, the whole new thing, you don't need a Bible. But we got promises. Yeah. Why? So that we might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through us. So God's Word says God has promises in here. The just shall live by faith. We'll live by faith from the Word of God. We need to take the Word of God and apply it to our life, feed on it, act on it, live by it. Amen? And be recipients of the, of the benefits of what the Word of God declares and promises as we walk by faith. Amen. You know, Hebrews ten seventeen. Just as a, this is um, not Hebrews. Romans ten seventeen. Hold your place in Hebrews eleven because we're going right back there. Romans. I should have told you to hold your place in, in, in Hebrews eleven to start with, but Romans chapter ten verse seventeen says, "So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of." God. We talked about how the faith is of the heart, it's not of the head. You can actually operate in faith in your heart and have doubt in your head because your head, it's a faith is not a, it's not a mental thing. Faith is a heart issue. It's a, for, it's a heart force. It comes from the heart. Mark 11, 23 says, if you believe in your heart and say with your mouth. Didn't say if you believe in your head. What is, uh, you know, we, we read this the other week. Uh, what did uh, Wesley say? He said that, the, you know, that the, the world, the church is given, or the world, or <laughs> the devil, there you go, has given the church a substitute for faith, one that looks and sounds so much like faith that few people can tell the difference. The substitute is called mental assent. In other words, they, in, in their head it makes sense. Right. And they think that's faith. Right. Now, faith is of the heart. The Word of God says if you believe in your heart. Romans chapter 10, back up there a few verses, it says, you know, for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Amen. Amen. So, we're to, you know, so what's the heart? Now, understand in, 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 in biblical, can I, can I just give you this real quick? In, in biblical interpretation, we like to take things literally first. But when they're figurative or allegorical, you have to recognize that and move on to that place. The Bible doesn't mean that the thing that pumps your blood is, is what you believe with. Amen. It's in reference to the core of man, the center of man, right. his spirit. Right. Not talking about your, your, the organ that pumps blood involved in the cardiovascular system. Right. 
okay? It's talking about the heart of man, the center of man. The, you know, we, when we get to the heart of the issue, we're talking about getting to the center, the core. We're talking about the heart of a tree. It's, it's, it's not an it's not a, a organ that's pumping blood. It's the center or core of the tree. And so when the Bible re refers to uh, the heart of man, it's not talking, in these, these cases it's allegorical. It's not talking about, you know, boom, 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 boom. It's talking about your spirit man. Now, 2 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23 says, I pray God your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of the Lord. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 says the word of God can divide asunder the heart, the soul, from the spirit. So the soul and the spirit are not the same thing. Right. If, you can divide, if you can separate them, they're not the same thing. Exactly. Okay? Yeah. All right. So, uh, all that. Now, we, so we, we kind of, we've come down here. We talked about walking by faith and not by sight last week. You know, not that, that, that faith doesn't deny circumstances. Faith just takes a higher law. And tonight we're going to talk about faith versus hope. Now, we're, this is my, that was my recap introduction. Uh, let's look over here. Um, I, hold your plate. Just mark Hebrews 11. We're, we're gonna, we are going to get back there. Let's back up a little bit over to 1 Corinthians chapter 13. We'll get back over to Hebrews 11. Just hang with me there for a little while. But, you, you know, you can put a piece of paper there. If you've got one of the little cool things in your Bible, just put your little marker in there. Now, the Word of God, the word of God says this. Now, abideth faith, hope, charity. And that word charity comes from the Greek agape, which means the God kind of love. So, it's love. It's love. It's, it's not. Now, remember, there's five Greek words for love. Um, the stoge. Agape, phileo, um, eros, and there's one more, and I'm just totally forgetting which one it is. Agape, stoge, eros, phileo, and there's one more. You know what it is, Brother Bill Rodolph? I'm forgetting what it is. They all, and the eros is erotic love. That's, that's real easy. Phileo is, is where they get the word Philadelphia from. It's brotherly love. Um, storge is like a friendship kind of love. Agape is the God kind of. It's the unconditional love. And I, and I, I just can't remember that fifth one right off the top of my head here. Um, and, um, you know, and so when the translators came here, you know, now, we have one word for love. We have love. You know? And we use it all kinds of ways. I love that. Well, we were being sarcastic. We really don't love it. We, 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 you know, we're, you know, you know. Man, I love you. Well, we, we're, we're friendship. You know, we use the same word all the time in different ways. I mean, and, and you got you got to take a bunch of context to figure out what it means. Right. Okay. Now, in the Greek, they had the different words for love, so when the word was used, you knew what it meant. Right. You know, and so it says here now about a faith, hope, and and charity. Now, the reason the word charity was used is when the Greek translators, uh, when the, when the English translators translated the King James, and uh, those sixty scholars were together, and it was a, it was a kingdom uniting kind of thing. You had, you had scholars from, from Ireland, you had scholars from Scotland, you had scholars from, from Great Britain, and they were all working on this authorized version of the Bible for, the, for King Jimmy, <laughs> who never ended up authorizing it. <laughs> it, was, <laughs> it never got his final approval on it. Hallelujah. Um, they looked for a word that would convey the meaning of agape. You know, unconditional love that says, I love you, period, no, no strings attached, nothing else. And at that time, the word charity conveyed that. You know, to give to someone with expecting nothing in return was unconditional love for, towards someone. Now, since then, the word charity has taken on the meaning united way. Right. Give to your local charity. You understand what I'm saying? You know, and it doesn't convey what the Greek word agape meant. The Greek, Greek word agape means I love you unconditionally. No strings attached. Okay? For God so agape that he, did, he didn't st uh, store gay friendship love the world or even brotherly love the world. He loved the world unconditionally. Okay, so that, that, that's the word that's used here. Now, by the faith, hope, and agape, or, or, or the God, we, we refer to it sometimes this way, the God kind of love. Okay, it's the love that God has. Um, these three, but the greatest of these is agape, or, or love. Well, yeah. Now, we, uh, we know that uh, according to Galatians chapter 5, verse 6, I believe it is, now in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision availeth anything, but faith which worketh by love. 
All right? Then you'll get people come on. See, we don't need, we don't need, the, we don't need the uh, faith in it. We just need love. All the world needs is love. What the world needs now is love, sweet love. It's just one thing that there's too little love. You know, a bunch of hippies singing, drinking Coca-Cola and singing songs up on the ha uh, mountaintop somewhere. I remember my era. All right? <laughs> Hallelujah. Anyway. You know, it says abideth. That means all three of them are still at work. The greatest is love because love has always got to be the motivating factor. Yes. Love empowers faith. Amen? Amen? All right. But abideth faith, hope, and love. Let me say this. If they three things abide, let me, and, and, and understand this, faith is not hope and hope is not faith. Right. And love is not faith and faith is not love. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So if all three abide, then that means they all have a, have a purpose and a role in the believer. Right. Isn't that right? Yes. I said that, we, that the believers should have faith, hope, and love working in their lives. Amen. 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 Faith, hope, and love cannot be interchanged. Faith works by love. Then faith gives substance to things hoped for. They cannot take each other's place. Right. Yeah. All right? I just need love. Man, you can, you can love people and die. Yeah. You can die loving people. You can go broke loving people. You can, you're going to have to walk by faith. Yeah. You know, you can be a good Christian who loves people and, and not live by faith. That's right. And not be successful. Yeah. Oh, I beg to differ. If you love people, you're successful. No, without faith, it didn't say without love it's impossible to please him. It said without faith it's impossible to please him. So I beg to differ with your analysis. Amen. Oh, we just need to love. God's pleased when we love people. Well, he is pleased when you love people. But the Bible says without faith, you can't please him. Okay? So there's not a, you can't just drop something out. And, 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 and here's where, where people get in trouble all the time in Bible study and Bible uh, and, 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 and doctrines that come through the church. Uh, right now we've got one going through the church. People acting like a bunch of idiots over. They'll huck on to one thing and they'll throw everything out, to, out the window. Uh, it's all pfft, stored out the window. All we, do, we don't need all that. We don't need, we don't need to do, have good works. We just need to live under grace. You don't need to repent. We're under grace. You don't, you don't need to go to church. You're under grace. You don't need to tithe. You're under grace. You don't need to give. You're under grace. Hello? I can say anything I want to say. I'm still going to have because I'm under grace. You see? Get off on an, on an extreme. You start throwing everything out. And you become unbalanced and unhealthy. Amen. Here, Paul writing in church corner says three things still abide. Faith, hope, and love. So you need all these working in your life to be balanced and healthy as a Christian. Amen. Amen. And, um, but we're talking about faith versus faith working or faith and hope working together. Let me say this. Faith looks to the future. I mean, so back up, cut that, remove that, bad statement. Now you'll get some idiot go out there who wants to do you wrong and they'll cut that statement out and go, see that preacher said that faith looks to the future. He don't even know what he's talking about. And the, the people are mean. <laughs> I recant that statement. All right. Hope looks to the future. The future, and I and I and I know a lot of people who have a lot of hope, and they're never walking in it because they don't ever get over in the faith about it. They keep it in hope. But I sure hope so. Are you talking? Oh, yeah, one of these days. Yeah, my ship's coming. All right. One of these days, the Lord's going to heal me. No, you're, you're not going to get it. All right. Hope looks to the future. Faith is now. Let's get back over to Hebrews 11 now. Hebrews chapter 11. Starting in verse 1. It says, now faith is. You just, you just say now and say faith is. Yeah. Now y'all do remember your, your, at least your elementary school English. What, what tense of the verb is is? Present tense. It's a present tense word. Faith is. Now faith is. Okay? The substance. We said the ground, the confidence, the title deed, the warranty. Warranty deeds, one translation says. Of things what? Hoped for. Now you, you understand this. Uh, Copeland um, had a, a, a series out a number of years ago. I, mean, still, I think he still has it out there. Called Hope, the Blueprint for Faith. You know, let me say this. You can have all the faith in the world. If you don't have hope, you ain't going to get anything either. There ha Why? Because faith gives substance to things hoped for. Right. If you don't have an expectancy or a desire of things out there, if you don't have a hope of something, 
You can't ever receive it by faith because there's nothing, there's nothing for your faith to get substance to. Faith lays hold, lays, lays hold of the things you're hoping for and claims them and brings them into the reality of now. I have it now. But you've got to have the hope. Okay? Hope is an expectation. Faith is the assurance. Hope is an expectation. Faith is an assurance. Hope always looks to some indefinite time in the future. Faith says, I have it now. Uh, Larry, go ahead and look up he, uh, Romans 4, 17 through 22 in Weymouth. I know you don't have the 20th century. We don't have the 20th century on there, do we? Now hold your place here. No, you don't have to hold your place. Go on, run, back, run back up to Romans chapter 4. Do we have 20th century New Testament up there? Okay, get, put, put it up, uh, get it up in 20th century. All right, and, I, and we'll put, we'll, I'm going to put verse 18 up eventually. Just let me read it first. Uh, King James, it says here in verse 17 through 22, as, as it is written, I have made thee to follow many nations. Before him of um, whom he believed, even God, who quickeneth the dead and calleth those things which be not as though they were. Remember, Wayman says he makes reference to things that do not exist as though they did. Here, verse 17. Who against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations accor uh, according um, to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body, now dead, when he's about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb, staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God, and being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also to perform, and therefore it was imputed to him for righteousness. Glory to God. Now, Let's back up here. Um, it says here in verse 18, it says, Who against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations, the 20th century. Ta-da! <laughs> says, um, As the scripture says, I made thee the father of many nations, and this they do in the sight of God, in whom Abraham faith, and who gives life to the dead, and speaks of, that, of what does not exist as though it did. Verse 18. With no ground for hope, sustained by hope, Abraham sustained by hope, put faith in God. Okay? You know, in other words, he had no natural in other words, he had no natural grounds for hope, but he had a supernatural basis of hope. God spoke a word to him. Right. Amen. That gave him hope and he put faith in God because of his expectancy that what God said would come to pass. Right. He had an expectancy. God produced an expectancy in him by his word, and he laid hold of that with his faith. You remember when, um, when the angel appeared to Paul? We read this earlier in this series. When the angel appeared to Paul when they were on the ship and said, Fear not, for I have given, uh, you know, no soul shall be lost. Right. Only the ship shall be lost. And Paul goes up on the deck the next day and says, Gentlemen, uh, I believe that it's even as it was spoken, it shall be as it, even as it was spoken unto me. Amen. What happened? The hope came when the angel gave him, gave him a word. He, he, but that wasn't enough. Right. You had to lay hold of that hope and, make, and, and lay hold of it by faith and bring it into the reality, I have it. Oh. Amen. You ever, you ever had somebody tell you something? You got, you know, uh, when, you, when you get over here, you're going to get such and such or whatever, you get an excitement about it. You know? And have you ever gotten in line for something going, I don't believe I'm ever going to get there. <laughs> or I'm ever going to get it. I'll get it there. I'll run it right before I'm going to get it there. Well, yeah, that's not faith. You, you, just, you were hoping. See, but hope takes the unseen realities of something out there and makes it yours now. It lays hold of it. It lays hold of it. So there's an expectation. When you, when you, when you, you, you know, you, they're having a healing service over faith and victory. People can come and hope. Oh, an expectancy that, you know, you know it's, 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 a, um, it's, it's an expectancy, but it's an expectancy of not, not necessarily wishing, but, um, man, I want it to be true. I want this to be true. Faith says it is true and lays hold of it and says it's mine. I believe it. I believe it. It's mine, glory to God. I take it now. Glory to God. Amen. But faith has to come first. I mean, hope has to come first. Hope has to come first. Because if faith is going to give substance to things hoped for, you've got to be in hope for it to give substance to it. 
You can't get backwards on it. It starts at hope. Right. Oh, I want that to be true. But then faith jumps in and says, well, God said it. God's not a man that he should lie. Amen? And it says, I take what he said, and I, I lay hold on that. Not just wanting it to be true, I lay hold of that and say it is true, and it's mine in Jesus' name. How many of you ever looked in the Bible and said, oh, man, I, do, I, I want that to be so? Yeah. Oh, I want that to be so. Boy, you got some hope. There's some hope arising there. There's an Oh, some things are starting to rise up in you, a desiring and, 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 and pursuing. But then faith, get, when, when faith kicks in and goes, up, oh, it's yours, you got it now. Boom. How long does it take to get in faith? I, I want to, not long. I said not long. And I'll tell you, the, the, the more you walk with God, the easier it is to get in faith about his word. Amen, that's right. Dad Hagen says you can school your faith into faith. School yourself into faith. Right. And, I, and I, but I, agree, I agree with that 100%. I really believe you can. I believe you can take the Bible and, and school yourself right into faith. Just taking, just stepping and jumping out and believing and receiving it in Jesus' name. Amen? All right. Um, so Abraham with no ground for hope. There was no, listen, when you, his body was, when we were talking about Sarah was pruning wound Sarah. I mean, that wound was dried up like a raisin. Da -dum -dum, dun -dun -dun, dun -dun -dun -dun. Ah, California raisins. Heard it through the grapevine. Come on, guys. It's Wednesday night. Lighten up. Her womb is dried up, baby. There is no natural grounds for hope. But I'm telling you, there is always a supernatural grounds for hope. Glory to God. When God gets involved, there's a supernatural. The Bible says, with no ground for hope, natural hope, sustained by supernatural. I'm, I'm just adding this as my own commentary. Supernatural hope, he put faith in God. And what happened? <laughs> we have a whole nation today. Yeah. Yeah. We have a whole nation today. Israel came. Because with no grounds for hope, sustained by a supernatural hope, he put faith in God. When I say supernatural hope, and a hope that came from God, a hope that comes from his word, hope that comes from, from an expectancy that the word of God is there and the word of God is true, and that when you lay hold on that in faith and say, yep, it's not just, I would like for it to be true, I know for a fact God will do what he said he would do. Amen? Amen. Hope gives vision. Faith lays hold of the future and embraces it now. Hope kind of does, you know, one of these days, faith says, today is the day. Amen. 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 Hope says, one of these days, I'm going to get, uh, the Lord's going to heal me. Faith says, today is the day. Yeah. Amen. Amen. See, and there's so, so many times people are just on the borderline. And if you can move them out of, uh, across that line, get them off of one of these days into, it's mine, I have it now. You can get, you can get, you can get them answers. You can get answers to them. You can get them help. I've worked with people before. And I'm telling you, there's been people I've worked with, you just couldn't get them out of hope in the faith. They couldn't, they just didn't see it. No matter what you said, they just didn't see it. Well, they got good, well, does that mean they're bad Christians? No. That doesn't mean they're a bad Christian. That has nothing to do with whether you're a good Christian or not. You know, whether you're spiritual or not. It just has to do with, you know, they just, they just didn't make that, that connection. Right. Hello? God loves them. They go to heaven. Praise the Lord. They're running down the streets of glory. And boom, a couple seconds after they got there, they knew what they did wrong. They knew, how, they, knew they weren't making the connection. But, you know, so what? He could, you couldn't pay them to come back. But I'm telling you, sometimes we got we got people right up to the line. Now, you know, uh, I don't pastor the way Brother Hagen did. I, I, maybe I should start. I'm getting old enough now. I guess I could get away with it. He said he, he prayed with people. And they say he said, "Now, do you have it?" They said, "Well, I sure hope so." He said, "No, you ain't going. You don't have it. <laughs> You're not going to get anything. You're hoping, and I'm a, and I'm a believing. We're not in agreement. It's not going. It's not going to work." You're hoping and I'm believing. 
You know? Or you're, you know, well, I'm going to lay hands on you, and when I lay hands on you, will you be healed when I lay hands on you? I sure hope so. Well, you won't. Why? You're hoping. So you you got to get you got to get, get across that line from one of these days to I embrace it now. What does the Bible say? Today is a day of salvation. Today is a day of salvation. Soterius. Now I'm sure it's probably a different conjugate or, or a different form of the verb or of the word. Um, but you know, soteria, soteria. I mean, it's different. You know, these words have so many conjugates and forms and stuff. But the root word soterius, salvation, mean it also means healing or health. I'm sorry, it's a noun, it's not a verb. That, that says as a verb. But um, it, means, it means health. Today's a day of health. If your heart and not your heart, is it, what was it, over in Hebrews, isn't that, guys? Bill, today if your heart, today if, uh, Hebrews 10. What's that, Brother Bill? Location, yep. For seven. Again, he limiteth a certain day, saying, "In David, today, after so long a time as it is said, today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Harden not your hearts." What? When's the day of salvation? Today. That's not. That's not what I'm looking for. That's, I'm looking for today is the day of salvation. Huh? Y'all got it yet, Larry? It, it doesn't really work real good when I, I'm looking for stuff and I don't have my Bible. I don't have my notes and I'm trying to remember right off the top. Okay. 2 Corinthians 6. 2 Corinthians 6, 2. Look at this. For you say that I have heard <coughs> thee in a time accepted, and in the day of salvation have I succored thee. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. When is the day of salvation? Now. now. We have to, and I understand salvation being soterius, or soteria, um, we can include health. Dr. Schofield covers that when he covers his, in his, his study Bible on uh, the, the word sozo and the sozo word group. Soteria being the noun of that word group. Um, it covers the fact that health is included. Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah, there you go. That's exactly what I, that's the one I was really after. Thank you. Yep. Thank you, Ron. Wherefore, Hebrews 3, 7, and 8, and wherefore, as the Holy Ghost saith, today if you will hear his voice, harden not your heart as in the day of propagation, the day of wilderness, and the temptation of the wilderness, when your fathers tempted me, uh, proved me, and saw my works 40 years. Wherefore, I was grieved with that generation, and said they do always err in their hearts, uh, and have not known my ways, so I swear my wrath, my wrath they shall not enter into my rest. So here we have, all, we'll put all these together. Today's the day of salvation. If you hear his voice and act on it today, you can have it now. But li listen, uh, as Hebrews 10 says, something interesting. Uh, I believe it's Hebrews 10. It says, the word did not profit them not being mixed with faith. That's hardening of your heart. Not being mixed with faith. There's a lot of people who get to hope, but they don't get the profit of the word because they don't mix faith. They're always in the future. I, um, we had, um, had some, well, it's, it's Karen's mom. Three, I guess three years ago I sent her that letter? Or two years ago, three years ago? She was diagnosed with some real, real, I mean, level whatever's lung cancer and all this kind of stuff. And, and I just sent her a letter and uh, encouraged her in the Lord, give her some scriptures and so forth. And at the end I signed it, I call you blessed and healed in Jesus' name. And she slipped that letter and she went, that's right, Aunt Taylor, that's right, I'm the heel, I'm the heel of the Lord. And she hung it on the refrigerator. And every time she go to the refrigerator, she saw, I, I call you blessed and healed. And still there. And I'm telling you, she's had, she's had, she lived a lot longer already than what they said she was going to live. And it's been a battle, but you know, she's held on to that. And so much so that she wanted to, she wanted a new copy of it. Because it, the sun had faded the ink. 
<laughs> so I found my file, reprinted it with the, the original date on it, re-signed it, and then sent her another letter, you know. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> call you, still call you blessed and healed. Praise the Lord. Amen. But she, she got it. Yeah. It's now. Yeah. Yep. And she holds on to that all the time. I'm healed now. And it's keeping her alive. It's keeping her alive. Praise the Lord. Because she laid hold of that and got a realization that, you know, hoping to get healed one day wasn't enough. It had to be right now. Today is the day of salvation. When? Today. But so many Christians are always putting it off till tomorrow. What's tomorrow? The future. What's future? It's hope. Now, growing up classical Pentecostal, um, our denomination, uh, you, 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 99% of people I ever talked to one of these days, I know, boy, they had enough hope if they just put a little bit of smidgen of faith on it. Yeah, yeah. They'd blow the top off of Mount St. Helens, <coughs> all right, or put the top back on it or something. I guess the top's already been blown off. <laughs> the joke, guys. Amen. <laughs> you know, so, so hope says it's, it's, it's coming one of these days. One of these days I'm going to have, yeah, the Lord's going to heal me one of these days. Faith says today's the day. I believe I receive it now. One of these days, I, 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 you know, one of these days Jesus is going to save me. People can go to hell saying one of these days Jesus is going to save me. Instead of saying, today is a day of salvation. I receive it now. I lay hold of it and take it now. Amen? Yeah. All right. So hope gives us a vision. Faith lays hold of the future and embraces it now. Um, we're saved by faith. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and 9. Ephesians 2, 8. It says, for by grace are you saved through faith, that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. And um, Romans chapter 10, you can, I mean, it's kind of hard to talk about this without talking about Romans 10. We're going to read from uh, 8 through 13 here. What saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That's Romans 10, 13, uh, 8, starting in verse 8. Um, in thy heart, that is the word of faith which we preach, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, or uh, literally, and, and better construct is that Jesus is Lord, um, and shalt believe in thy heart that God is raised from the dead, thou shalt be saved, sozo. And for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek, the, the, for the same Lord over all is rich upon all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now notice that it's, we're talking about that we're saved by faith and not by hope. See, faith, hope would say here, uh, when it calls the Lord, one of these days the Lord's going to save me. Faith says, today's my day, I believe it now, I have it now. Faith never says, I sure hope so. Yeah, you, know, you got a lot of people praying. I'm, we're just a hoping and a praying. No, you, 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 instead of hoping and praying, you better be praying in faith. Amen. Praying and a believing. I'm just a believing and praying, or praying and believing. Yep. Oh Lord, one of these days we know you're going to do this for us. Well, no, no, you got to get out of that. You have to get into that today. Remember, Jesus said this. He said, "Take no thought of the morrow." For su sufficient uh, uh, is the evil in the day, or, or sufficient for the day is the evil thereof. In other words, we have to live, we live in the present. We're, we live by faith. We live in the present. Faith has a hope for the future. I mean, hope has a, has a vision for the future, but faith lays hope and makes it now. I have it now. Everybody say, now. now. Let's say Eastern, Eastern Carolinian, right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Uh, right now. That's Eastern Carolina, brother. I don't, you, you Western state. <laughs> and we got it written now. All right. So, faith is not hoping that we will see the answer in the future. Faith is believing that we have the answer now. 
Again, faith is not hoping that we will have the answer in the future. Faith is believing that we have the answer now. Listen, when you, you know, there are people, there, there are denominations that teach you can't ever know if you're saved. Whether well, there's a denomination. <laughs> Old hard shell and hard to crack nuts at that. Um, certain group, you know, you just never know if you're going to save or not. That's the, they're hoping, that, well, they're, they're hoping they're going to make it in. They're just a hoping, you know, that when the roll is called up, they, their number gets punched. Hello? But faith, but, well, see, you can know you're saved. You can lay hold of it. You can, you can draw your last breath with the full assurance you're, you're, you're born again, your name's in the land's book of life, and you're going to heaven instead of drawing that last breath just to hoping that you make it in. A uh, bad way to wake up if you didn't. I said that's a bad way to wake up if you didn't. Hello? So faith, again, faith is not hoping that you will see the answer in the future. Faith is believing that you have the answer now. So let's go back to Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1. Now listen, you got to have hope. You got to hope that there's, there's answers for you. You got to have a vision. You know, I, I, I hope, you know, a sick person has a hope to be healed. Faith finds a way to lay hold of that and bring it into reality. How many sick people have you ever seen walk around? They have a hope. They're going to doctors. They're hoping they got an answer. Yeah. They're trying to find somebody that's got the answer. There's a hope in them that there's somebody that's got an answer. Right. Faith comes and takes all that hope and says, boom, you got it now. And it lays hold of it. I, I heard, you know, I've heard some stories from Dad Hagen where people, you know, they just, they were, they were in hope. And he said, well, the Bible, and they're getting reading the Bible. And they're like, oh, 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 I see it. Lay your hands on me. I'll be healed right now. I see it. I see it. I have to believe it now. I have to believe it before I have it. See, I'm going to say something else about hope. Hope only believes it when it sees it. Faith believes what it cannot see. People who are in hope, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're going to only believe it when they see it. Right. When they don't feel any pain. When the bank account has uh, lots of zeros behind the first whole number before the decimal. Hello. Uh, six. Hallelujah. <laughs> Let's go ahead and get that million dollar range, brother. Praise God. Amen. Million dollars don't go where it was as far as it used to go anyway. I was thinking about the other day, my, my, the house that, that, that my parents bought when we moved to Aden, North Carolina back in 69. I think it was about 15, about 1,700 square foot house, garage, hardwood floors throughout. Now back then they didn't put in central air, they just, you, had, you had oil heat. And, uh, but anyway, $16,500. I think I figured something like, I don't know, what, 75 cents a square foot or something. <laughs> or maybe 90 cents a square foot. I mean, ridiculous price. Or, or $10 a square foot. $10 a square foot. That's it. 1,600 square feet times $10 would be 16000 Yeah. Yeah. So somewhere around $10 a square foot. Yeah. Money don't go as far as it used to, does it? I remember filling up with gas for 22 cents a gallon and stuff. I remember when I went at 39 cents a gallon, you had to, you had to fly a, blue, a green flag and a white flag. You came with an odd number, even number license tag. That president went down as the worst in the history. Anyway, <laughs> how did I get out of faith onto that? I don't know. Oh, I was just talking about, you know, million dollars. Yeah, a million dollars. Don't, don't go as far as it used to, but praise God, I'll still take it. Amen? Amen. We, we, so Hebrews 11, 1, now faith is the substance of things hoped for. See, faith comes into the middle of hope and says, I have this now. It's mine. And brings it out of a, understand my terminology, a fantasy realm into the reality of possession. Understand, I'm just trying to use some, something that kind of would help you click or make, make sense out of that. Because hope's always out there in the future. You never get to hope. 
you'll never get to hope. You have to bring hope to you out of the future into the present, and you do that by faith. Because faith is now. Faith has it now. So faith has to reach into the future of hope and bring it into the present of now. Because hope will always stay in the future. But faith can take what's in the future and change it and bring it into the now. Amen? Amen. So instead of people going, I sure hope I get healed. Oh, praise God. They can lay hold of the promise of God and pull it out of the realm of the I wish or I would like to be or I hope I get healed one of these days or one of these days and bring it out of these one of these days into today is the day and make it the reality, the guarantee. Faith is the guarantee that what, what you wish for for tomorrow or hope for for tomorrow is yours today. Amen. I know we go, we, we've been beating on this, but you know, so we got we to get people to see. You've got to see. You can't, you're, you're, you're never going to receive as long as you're, it's out here. As long as it's one of these days. It has to get into the now. And the only thing that can take the hope of tomorrow and make it the reality of today is faith. Amen. Amen.